Uh, all I mean is advantage can roll like this. Uh, it's impressive, really. You need to find a, a way to use your die. power for good. It's a, it's a 15 total. 15 will hit. 15 will hit. All yes. right. I think you single-handedly found out that this guy's AC, which is incredible. <laughs> Could be 14. Uh, that is 7 piercing and 8 fire. Okay. He is bloodied at this point. I got another attack. I love how McDowell is like, like most people, it's like talk shit, get hit. He's got the opposite problem. Talk hit, get shit. <laughs> uh, that is a 17 to hit. That'll hit. Get him. For nine piercing and nine fire. Okay. And please to make... Uh... <laughs> uh, another strength saving throw, please. Uh, 14. Nope, 17 still. He takes another 3 damage, and he's pushed 15 feet into the ground. <laughs> I mean, into the... You're, are you, like, sliding him away from you? No, just the... Uh... He just wanted to do extra damage. Okay, got yeah, just extra down. damage. The direction is down. <laughs> the direction is down into the dirt. And uh, I'm going to say you've got to right. push him somewhere if you use the pushing attack. He's not going to be able to what save What if I him. use the tripping attack? I'm going to say you can't use a tripping attack against a prone opponent. <laughs> prone attack. Okay. How about... you, can, you can hit him and slide him away from you or into your fire or... Yeah, I'll I'll slide him into the... Uh, <laughs> the fire? Oh. Oh, no, I'll slide him into the fire. I've got the fame more. Yeah. Okay. I love fire. And are you staying on top of him, or are you following? I'm following him and offhand attack. Okay. Because I can use that now. For twenty. Uh, twenty will hit. Twenty will hit for. Uh, six slashing. Okay. And. Is that it? Are we out? Uh, yeah, one, mo uh, one more uh, saving throw, please. We'll push him again. <laughs> we'll just bully him around whatever map we're on. Push him back where he started. 15. <laughs> 15. Nope. Pushing him out of the fire. Yeah. For another 8 damage. And that will kill him. And I mean, he cries <laughs> out as you kick him into the fire, but he's not there long enough to start smoldering as you hit him again, and he bowls over. And his wings slump on top of him, and he moves no more. Adrix lets out a very exasperated sigh. Hey guys! Nothing personal, he says. Hey guys, the last the time Bad Ears showed up, he had a crossbow. I just wanted yeah. to point that out. <laughs> yeah. Adrix, what's up? <sighs> I was gonna mention it earlier, but I thought it would be funnier <laughs> not to. <laughs> uh, Adrix. We'll make a quick survey of the area, but he's pretty sure Bad Ears is on before he tries and gets some rest again. Make a perception check. Well, what do you, I mean, what are you doing with Bad Ears' body? Just leaving it there? Yes? No? I'm trying to figure out, out how, pissed, how pissed off Adrix is. Um, <laughs> no, it's he, he'll make very good kindling, I'm sure. So, burn the body. Okay. Oh, I thought you said you were going to piss on him. <laughs> you said pissed and off. You said make a perception him. check, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, at disadvantage, because off. it's nighttime and you don't have dark vision. Uh, even with the... Uh, you okay. can see the area right around your fire. Yeah, but... That's not rotate. There we go. Rotating! Um, That's still a 15. By ear, you just hear the sound of the wilderness that you've become accustomed to. Uh, you don't notice any more movement. And after a few uh, moments of searching the area around your camp and listening to the sounds on the wind, you're pretty confident that Bad Ears was alone. Good. Adrix warms up by the fire before going back to sleep. Okay. Not trying to not think twice about Bad Ears. Are you still going to stay out there for the full 13 days? Well, this was on his way back. We determined how oh, long okay. he was out in the wilderness and on his journey back. Uh, 
All right. Uh, Adrian. <laughs> yes. Bad Ears was, in fact, carrying a crossbow. He was. All right. And a silver dagger that he was stabbing the crap out of you with. Excellent. Red will like this. He loves daggers. He loves uh, silver. And his coin pouch. <laughs> I opened the coin pouch. And it contains more coins inside that you thought it could possibly contain. Oh, okay. When it's closed, it doesn't look weighty or heavy at all. Like he could just tuck it into his shirt. But when you open it up and you start rooting through it, you pull out an entire handful of gold coins. Oh no. If it makes you feel better, I too thought that you were about to get attacked by a gold method. <laughs> yeah, same. I was about to. <laughs> so you don't, you don't have to feel too silly about that one. So I have a kind of just an out of question, just so I, to clarify something. Uh, mm -hmm. All of the gold that has been associated with Mammon has had the same. It's not, they're just, they look the same. It's the same gold. They have the same iconography on them, right? Uh, it varies. Okay. I mean, you're, you guys typically are not used to all of your coinage having the same picture on it anyway, because this far north, all the coinage tends to just be a hodgepodge of wherever it came from. Uh, but the coinage that the Yanti had were minted by them. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and it is different from the other coins you guys were carrying. Uh, back at the Warrens. It does take Adrix a good 12 days to come back. Here's what transpires in that time. It's noted pretty quickly that Bad Ears must have been the one that killed the guard. Because he's the only one unaccounted for within the first few moments after the, uh, the murder was discovered. There is a great discussion about because this betrayal came at the hands of an outsider that the Warrens have extended their friendship is, the discussion does turn to whether or not it's even safe to let the rest of you stay here and partake of their hospitality. We didn't kill your man. <laughs> Are you guys going to argue in favor of being allowed to stay or some other course of action to be honest at this point these people are so bogus that if they decide to kick us out it's just like all right cool uh well we need to at least stay until adrix gets back okay yeah many of the people here that you've met especially frelish uh also sis kind of to your surprise do speak on your behalf as well as several of the elders the rat folk are a fickle people but they begin reminding people that, hey, the Duchess traveled here with these people. They've done great things for us. They saved our source of water. Ratfolk are not known for their gratitude, but these reminders do start to fly. Let's get a persuasion check from the group. I'll let any of you make the persuasion Rather check. Rather than making a persuasion mind? check, oh. can I make a cooking tools check? Um, no, this is already rolling persuasion. the persuasion. Persuasion is four. Plus four in here. In fact, cooking them food is liable just to make them more mad because you're using up their Wasting stores. more of their food. I'm not. I'm using the so that's, <laughs> Uh So that would be an 18. Okay. And it doesn't take much to persuade them that, no, you had nothing to do with this murder and you are actually working to uh, help to preserve the warrants. Here's what Pran and Fel Frelish had in mind over the course of the next few days. Uh, Pran explains this to Razu when you tell him that there is this enormous Yanzi city and you're going mm -hmm. to have to go in there and essentially get inside this place. He tells you that very, very far below, there are places where the mountains open up to all different sorts of deep dwellings, old and abandoned places. One of these paths leads to the home of what Frelish calls the Colorful Dreamers. Deeper than that, okay. in places that he's explored, he seems to be much bolder than some of the other rat folk. 
he describes to you what to your ears sounds like a dwarven ruin. And he tells you that he had an experience there one time. There's a room that has a strange circular metal slab in the floor with three great spikes. And when he says great spikes, he holds his little rat folk hands apart a couple of inches. Like, it would be big enough to, like, impale his foot, but Razu would be like, ah, oh, something pricked my boot. Okay. He tells you that in examining these spikes, he accidentally cut his hand on them once, and having drawn blood from them, he describes what he had as an out-of-body experience. All right. Make a... Make an arcana, or... I'd even say religion check. I will take religion. Because my arcana is not... Apparently neither is my religion. That is only a not. It's hard to follow the description of what he's done here, but you he explains that the experience was bizarre, but not harmful. It's something that he's gone back to do many, many times over the years. He's addicted okay. to this now. And it's something about, like, you leave your body and you're able to move outside of your own body and not be in any danger. And this, he thinks, is the cloak that Frelish spoke of. Okay. Some of the hunters up top. Uh, Sis asks you guys if you would assist in going out with the hunters and or the Zerich in trying to locate bad ears. <laughs> Certainly. Yep. And for more than a week, you guys head out on these excursions with these search parties, uh, ducking Yanti slaving groups here and there, and really? no sign of the Kubo. Aww. Until the 13th day, when you see coming down from the cliffs, uh, Adrix with his full pack coming back from his expedition. Atrix, I found a deer. I want you to carry it. Uh, okay. Alright. Sounds like a great Adrix. idea. And as Adrix stoops find? down to drag this deer, you see that his neck has been very, very stabbed. Let's <laughs> uh, see, so you found more than just uh, landmarks, eh? You alright? Yeah, it was great. I got to do ranger stuff for... Haven't done that in a while. It was really, really fun. Okay. That ear sabotaged me. That really sucked. I had to kill him. Don't know why he did that. Uh, really, no, it really turns sucked. out he was an asshole. Yeah, it turns out he's a murderer. Go figure. So good job. Okay. <laughs> Any idea who might have put him up to this? Uh, the only thing he said to me before I took care of him was uh, it's all part of the job? It's not personal. Really uh, personal, something like that. Yeah, it's not personal. Did you take He's his? Reminded by someone else. Did you bring yeah. back his equipment, or did you leave it all there? Yes, Adrix would have brought back the money pouch and the dagger, which he gives the... to Red because he knows Red loves daggers. The money pouch. <laughs> uh, Razu yep. flips it open, and it's as I described. When this pouch is closed, it look it's small enough that this. Erd could hide it inside of his shirt. But when you open it up, put your hand in it, your hand fills up with gold coins. You can pull out a big heap of them. Razu pointedly does not pulls the uh, bag close. <laughs> says, our friend Mammon gets around, doesn't he? Wait, is that... Is it creating coins, or is it just like a large hide bag? Can can Bert, can I have the bag? By no, the way, wait, like, Bernie, no, wait, no. Bernie, wait, 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 what if... So if we no. if we hold the bag open and just dump them out, right, how many coins I, are going to fall out? That's exactly what I wanted to know. Do you attempt should this? we really be doing that here? Maybe we should be at least a day's away from the one. I mean, aren't y'all a day? We're away. Yeah, I figure we wait. were like a while oh, okay. away. You're a few miles away from the Warrens, uh, yeah. out into the wilds, but right now you have a group of Zerich and hunters with you. Like, if you upturn this sack of gold, these rat folk are going to die for it. Okay, Razu. we're going to do some dumb... 
some dumb shit. <laughs> like, just be aware that this might be- this is possibly demonically cursed gold. So wait, and, and you so probably hold up. shouldn't touch How it. How about you guys take this deer? It's your deer now, congratulations. Which Andrix is still carrying. So you're trying to convince the rat folk to drag the deer back to yeah. the Warrens without you? With yeah. news that Bad Ears has been killed? Yeah. Okay. Adrix yeah. will Adrix will carry the deer and give the news himself that Okay, so hey, you're leaving that... the group and going with the rat folk. Yeah. Okay, as they play should... with Adrix's toy. <laughs> Which Adrix will definitely want back. And so the, the the rest of the four of you are still out in the wilds with this money pouch. Yeah. yeah. What are you talking about, Adrix? You've just traded it for a deer. <laughs> and you wait a few moments. And after ten minutes or so, they're well out of eye shot and ear shot on their way back. Can we to can we find a cliff to shake this over? Oh man. There's large rocks and trees and such in the area. Well, I'd rather whatever happens, might as well just deal with it as it is, because otherwise we're just gonna end up having to chase this bullshit around. I'd rather just drop it here at my feet and All stab right. whatever comes out. I could drop it out of a tree. We just, Red like, flips his new dagger and I'll fly right up there. In his hand. No, it's, right. it's fine. We'll we'll do it. We'll do it. We'll do it. We'll do it right Should we here. do this underwater? We no. will do this right here. Who is upending Bad Ears' wallet? Oh, Lassie. Wendy's absolutely up up ending no. his wallet. You can't no, get Lassie it faster is. than Wendy can. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wendy, can I just? You open the bag, okay. you open the pouch, and o overturn it, and two hundred and fifty gold coins spill out of it. Oh, that's disappointing. Way more gold coins than you could reasonably fit into such a small pouch. Oh, this might just be a larger on the inside pouch. What? It might not be Malmon gold. Ber Bertie says, can I see the pouch? I mean, Bertie, if Is I you... give you this pouch, are you going to let me play with it too? Yes. <laughs> yes, Okay, I absolutely. Am. Here you go. Okay, so I, like, start putting all the random bullshit from my uh, pouch. What, from what my do you pouch. put into it? Uh, I'll put my short sword in there. And you put I'll the put tip my... of your short sword into it, and it pokes through the pouch, pierces through the other side. Oh. <sighs> Adrix is gonna be so mad. Wendy, here's what you did. Yeah. You let him play with the pouch, and he immediately destroyed it. Okay, here's the thing, though. Here's the thing, Rosa has a whip. I wouldn't have known that it would do that otherwise. No, and Wendy you, doesn't actually care about the pouch. She just wants to know how it works. You hear and now she does. the tearing sound that the sword makes as it pierces through the pouch. And you're huh, I wouldn't have thought breaks. that's how it worked. That kind of insinuates it is a mammon pouch. It's a gold-only pouch. Birdie, what now? Birdie just throws the pouch over his shoulder. Oh, Adric is going to be so mad. Razu says, alright, well, it looks like we have our answer that, again, Mammon gets around. What? I, what? I thought that that was pretty conclusive. If it was a Mammon pouch, wouldn't it just have infinite or Well, well I don't no, because if you give someone infinite gold, why would they do your work anymore? We also but if you haven't... give them a pouch that only holds gold. Yeah, we also haven't actually, like, seen the limits of one of these pouches. We tend to kill them before that happens. And that's what we continue to do. That doesn't doesn't seem to work so, out. Should we bury this like gold so that it doesn't tempt someone else and they get attacked by demons? Good point. I mean, yes. it might just be regular gold. That's what I'm thinking. I'm wondering if this was just a pouch that happened to be bigger. Like it also could be gold that turns into mephits. Right. So. Yeah. So can I put my water skin out onto the pouch onto the gold? <laughs> put your gold into your water skin. Yeah. No. Take my water skin and pour it over this pile of gold. Yeah, you empty your water skin over the gold, and now it's wet. I think that's just wet gold, guys. How about we just... we? I'll sew this pouch back up. We we put some gold in it. And we just give it to Adrix, and we don't tell him. <laughs> I think the damn thing away. Well, I'd be interested to see if fixing the pouch makes it hold 250 gold again. I that's a good point. That. So let's do that. Okay. So Wendy, you're sewing the pouch back up. Yeah. And once it's sewed back up, it does. It yeah. in fact does not hold the quantity of gold anymore. So we put some gold in it. <laughs> Should we though? I thought you guys were worried this is mammon gold. Oh, I don't. I don't care about that. We've killed like 13 methods at this point. <laughs> if more methods want to come by, I'll punch them. 
Also, we've killed like four or fifty like servants of Mammon, like at this point. He wants to come call and I'll punch him too. I He's... do like that we have I have this campaign in a spot where my players are arguing about how best to get rid of their friggin' gold. <laughs> <laughs> we don't even want it. <laughs> okay. Listen. The uh the thing is we <laughs> We need to I say we just get rid of this thing. We throw the gold up the into the into the bottom of a lake or something and then just leave it alone. Don't touch no, it. No, I say if Mammon wants to come calling, he can come for his gold himself, and we'll deal with him the way we did all these methods. Seems a bit rash. Well, I'm just saying, what's the like Are you allergic we throw to this gold? pouch into Don't you dare say that. We no. throw this pouch into a lake. Some poor bastard comes by, finds a pouch full of gold, keeps it. Then they're screwed. Yeah, but that's if not we our take problem. This pouch full of gold. Then they'll come after us, and we can just kill them. I don't think many people go diving to the bottom of the gold. We found it. We that's killed the gold it for it. It was on a cobalt that tried to murder Adrix. We we killed it. We killed it. <laughs> <laughs> we killed it. <laughs> as far as I'm aware, cobalts just spontaneously find pouches of gold everywhere. It looks randomly just, says to himself. We literally just tipped Birdie over and he was vomiting it out. So as far as I'm aware, they they spawn on cobalts like maggots on bread. <laughs> Alright, fine, we carry the thing. Alright? So you're, you're, you're taking the, the 250 gold and this pouch? Yeah. Who's taking it? But this is but this is a this is a we do not use this money for any reason. You can go ahead and at, make make sure you notate where that two hundred and fifty gold ends up, which one of you is carrying it and whether you're keeping it separate from your other supply or not. If Wendy is advocating keeping it, I'm all for Wendy making Wendy carry it. Yeah, I don't well, think there's any way Wendy doesn't end up with it. Yeah. I mean, we thought okay. we were gonna give the pouch back to uh Oh I am. <laughs> okay. So like I have a spare pouch. You wanna just like Oh, I don't care what happens to the rest of this gold. I'm just putting some of it in this pouch. You can, Why don't we just dig up 30 or 40 coins into this pouch? Yeah, can, I'm throwing 30 pouch. or 40 coins in this pouch. Can we just bury the rest in a hole right here? No one will ever find it. Yes, yes let's, let's do, do that. that. Let's do that. And then that way, your department, Birdie. It's, it's like, so I'll... Okay, I'll whip out my shovel, shovel and dig out a five-foot hole. Okay. Hole expert Birdie. Just straight down, five feet. <laughs> You're burying the bulk of this gold. Okay. Yes. You've you've ruined gold for this party, Brick Road. <laughs> like, <laughs> congratulations. I hope you're happy. Okay. The Warrens is above with activity when you guys get back. Uh, a lot of the Zerich especially were upset that Bad Ears was not able to be found and brought to justice here in the Warrens. Nonetheless, they're pretty much relieved to learn that he's been dealt with. Adrix, yep. here's what you learned on your expedition. Yeah. Very difficult overland journey. A lot of a lot of climbing. Okay. Uh, up into the mountains. And you identified uh, several such ravines uh very treacherous to travel next to because it's, it's very easy to lose your footing and there are places where the stone overhangs so far that you scarcely even know you're walking over such a ravine once or twice during your journey uh you saw a small fissure a small crack in the ground and upon peering into it realized the cavity underneath must have been enormous <laughs> Hmm. Like Minecraft ravines. Five or six days out. Uh, you had a lot of false starts. You had a lot of switchbacks. Uh, you had found a lot of impassable roads. <laughs> the There's very little population in the area. Mostly just the wild animals that live up in the, the mountains. Uh, you didn't come across any opposition in the forms of like goblinoids or even the Yanti slavers would not patrol the mountainous areas because there's nobody up there to enslave. You do, however, find the ravine after on the sixth day or so. And I'm going to go ahead and just pop back to imager.com. Uh, by the way, 
after 13 days, am I still poisoned and exhausted? No, after your first long rest, you're no longer poisoned. Okay. Now, at this point, everybody but Adrix can go ahead and take a bunch of long rests. Oops, that's the wrong button. Okay. Adrix can pound sand. Exactly. I'm going to draw the basic shape of this ravine, and hopefully it makes sense to you. And I'm looking at a Photoshop window while I'm doing this to make sure I get it right. <laughs> <laughs> the shape of it is something like this. Oops, that was that was not correct. I tried to <laughs> I tried to pan the, the camera while I was drawing and the line was like whoop. There we go. Everyone explodes. So essentially, this Yanti city takes up this massive cave structure that is open to the air in the center of where this ravine opens up. Uh, I, I, the compass here is flipped around. So uh, along the south slope, which is closer to the Warrens, this is the direction you would have been approaching from. It's relatively sharp. Like you can come right up on this sharp straight edge and look down into it. However, you personally didn't do that because they did have patrolmen in this area walking the perimeter of the top of the ravine. The surrounding area is mostly flat. It's on like a like a rocky shelf, a plateau, that on the north side of it, the cliff steeps up very uh, sharply. So you found an entrance into and out of this area, but it is heavily patrolled by the Yanti. How they get from the city below, up here, you're not sure. At nighttime, you were able to get as close as the, the northern, I'm sorry, the southern. This, this compass rose is messing me up. Uh, the southern edge up here, up in this area. And you were able to approach under some underbrush and look down and see the lights and activity in the city below. It looks as though the city comes to life at night, more so than during the day. And according to what Red had said, the entrance to the lab would have been somewhere like here. And that's what you learn on your expedition. You're able to reach this place overland or through the river, through the lab. Out of more out of my curiosity, mm -hmm. would Adrix have ever seen something like this before in any like of his adventures? Because this seems like an incredible like spectacle. You mean in terms of there being a city down there? Yeah, I'm gonna probably not, almost assuredly okay. not. In terms of the geological structure, yes, because Adrix has traveled these lands before. Okay. So, I mean, you've seen these deep ravines before, and I'm assuming you've never had the hankering to go spelunking down into one. No. <laughs> yeah, I figured Adrix would have been familiar with a ravine, but the idea of, like, a city in the ravine, like, that's, we call that the Underdark, not like... <laughs> this is way too high up to be the Underdark. Yeah. Like, even in the depths of this ravine, this city is still well above sea level. Because you're pretty high up in the mountains now. All right. It's the middle uh, dim. The middle dim. <laughs> Here's what's curious to you, though. You've never seen a Yanti city before. You've traveled with Red long enough to have heard of the Yanti ziggurats that they built. They're great mm -hmm. pyramid structures, typically in heavily forested or swampland areas. It's hard to tell by moonlight, but it's a clear night, and you don't see any such structures down here the, the buildings that you can see the great one that you're on top of here uh, and then a few more out in the distance look to be single or maybe two-story structures with flat roofs which tells you that they're probably built down into the earth Okay. 
the it's overland route Marvel. is traversable, but Birdie will probably complain about it. <laughs> and a little bit treacherous, so... Treacherous in terms of climbing and yeah. uh, particularly weather conditions. If it storms, it would be incredibly dangerous, but not in terms of... Uh, you're not going to get ganked by bandits up here. And as far <laughs> as you know, there are no giant monsters. You didn't encounter any. I totally rolled for that, by the way. <laughs> They're just bad ears. Um... Okay. Um... Sounds like we need to get climbing equipment of some kind for everyone else. Okay. Oh, Adrix, by the way, you probably didn't need to go tra traipsing out there for two weeks because we found a magical out-of-body experience thing, too. Uh, that's fine. <laughs> I got to be a ranger. I've, it's been a really long time since I've done <laughs> I actually really enjoyed it. Well, good. Glad you enjoyed yourself. Adrix and Red, having laid eyes on this city, the sheer massive size of it. Uh, you wouldn't know where to start infiltrating this place. You're going to need some kind of inside information to orient yourselves before you plan an excursion in. Yeah, that that came across my mind too. I don't know where we would try to enter in from. I'm still not even sure what we're going to do once we're inside. So, well, you said we were we were going to you know deal with this this heretic poison, right? Well, I think we dealt was... with the heretic poison. I'd hope. Well, I mean, like obviously I... they were like in on it because it's like the lab is literally right here. It's right there. Yeah. It's like it's not like they didn't know about it. Well, don't forget, like these people are a threat to the rat folk too. So yeah. So possible no, I mean, I just something to take care of. Possible unrelated question is what do you do with the white snake? Mm. Um, is he able to translate any of the books we brought back? By the time you bring some books to the white snake, he is incredibly this would have happened during the twelve days Adrix was out, yes? Yeah, yeah. He's incredibly malnourished he tells you that he will do anything you ask of him but you have to bring him food first mm -hmm. elsewise he's like to starve basically he's asking you to show him some modicum of mercy before he commits to helping you at all sure um i'll just steal some food from the kitchen then how hard can that be <laughs> pretty so... fucking hard rat folk are stealthy and perceptive <laughs> <laughs> i have an, i have a woman on the inside who? <laughs> Wendy. Oh, you. <laughs> so Wendy's gonna feed the feed the white snake. Okay. Well, I think between the two of us, we can sneak something over to him. Yeah. He's not able to read the writing, but he does recognize it. Mm -hmm. And he tells you about the hydroloths that came to their temple, that arrived on their doorstep one day, with promises of great magic and great power. How many were there? Two. And he says <laughs> there was a faction amongst his city that uh, believed these Hydroloths were able to do what they said they could do. That the matriarchs decided to give them access to one of their laboratories for a year to see if they could produce these kinds of results. He seems very and, troubled by this. He and tells, did they? And he starts describing the the goo that you've encountered. Mm -hmm. the, that he believes to be heretical. So, I destroyed six large containers of it. Is that all, or had, did they have t would they have had time to make more of this between now and then? He tells you, no doubt, there would be more in the city itself. If you found six containers, it's possible they were ready to move more into the city. There's probably a large quantity of it. As you're talking to him, there's definitely... Uh, 
make a make an insight check. Sure. I know you always knock these out of the park, but you might roll like a one or something. Well, I rolled a three, but that's still a. Uh... <laughs> it still turns into a thirty-seven. I know how rogues work. So a fourteen. <laughs> Okay. As you're speaking to him, he's being forthright with what he knows. He's being truthful when he says he can't read this script, but he has seen it. Uh, which tells you that he was in contact with these Hydroloths or their agents at one point. He describes this script as... Uh, essentially being demonic. A script that if you could read it, uh, the scholars in the city that attempted to, it would actually drive them in, uh, drive them mad. It would mess with their head. Oh, okay. Something about what he's telling you, though, doesn't sit right. He's still holding something back mm -hmm. out of fear, which means there's something about this situation. He fears more than starving to death in this cell or being executed by these rat folk. So what else do you push and, on? And there were never any others? It was just the... You guys, they, you they didn't bring more help with them afterwards? After you had accepted? They didn't need to, because after these Hydroloths began to ply their trade, uh, alchemists and taskmasters from the city began flocking to them. Began working with them began exhibiting almost cult-like behavior around them. And you don't think this is the work of, uh, of the gods? He says that he believes it to be the work of the deepest pits of the abyss. That this work if led to its conclusion, will lead to the downfall of his people. So how would I go about stopping all of it then? Like you, when we first talked, you seemed to, you led me to believe that the lab that we were going to go into would be independent. We could destroy all of the prison simply by destroying those, the, what we found there. Do you describe how you destroyed it to him? Yeah. It's hard to tell that he goes pale because he's already very white. Mm -hmm. And he, Same. <laughs> he tells you that in all likelihood you haven't destroyed it at all. Merely converted it to another form. I don't but, know of any poisons that retain their potency after being burnt, but alright. He asks you if you know of any poisons that can damage the Yanti's blood. Uh, fair enough. One, actually, I ran into. Nasty stuff. Drow made. Speaking with White Snake. Whoops. Sorry, I lost my notes here. And my laptop froze up. <laughs> oh, and I'm on fire. And I'm on fire. <laughs> oh, and... it started to rain, so there goes my electricity. Uh... At least I put out the fire. <laughs> he tells you that he didn't expect you would actually go to the lab. He didn't expect mm -hmm. that you'd actually do anything. And even now, he suspects that it's possible that you're just lying about having killed these hydrologs. How does he know that you have the goal of wanting to destroy this substance and end its effect on his people? How else do you think I got that script? Do you think they're going to give it up willingly? I have more. He nods. He finds that persuasive. 
He tells you that if he assists you any further, if he gives you any information, he will never be allowed to go back to his city. He will be in exile forevermore. Like, uh, Red, Red does not respond to that at all. Like, okay. Like, he. <laughs> Red's just like, yeah, that's the. You're probably better yeah, off anyway. Sympathy for like, me. That's anyway. true, says Red. <laughs> exactly. Yes, thank you. That's true. He gives you three tasks that you probably need to accomplish uh, in order to see this done. Mm -hmm. The first would be to extract a Yanti named Tatsoshi. Tatsoshi is essentially acted as a go-between between the matriarchs and what became the cult of these Hydra Locks. The reason he's important is he knew more than anyone else in the city about this substance and how it was being made and how it might be employed. He would also know where in the city any stores of it are being held. Mm -hmm. How do you spell that? T-A-T-Z-O-S-H-I. So your first quest in the Metal Gear portion of the campaign is to extract this scientist. And he would come willingly? Surprised you didn't name him Dr. Badma Badmar. Go to, go to jail. <laughs> he tells you that Tatsoshi is the one who assisted him in escaping the city in the first place. He helped him get out beyond the guards and out into the caves. Because he shares his same opinion. He started this out with... We're going to create this powerful weapon that will make our city the greatest Yanti civilization in the north. And as it progressed, he realized what he was creating was a weapon to surpass Metal Gear. Okay. <laughs> he thinks that Tatsoshi will not only help you, but if you can get him safe passage out of the, uh, the region, might also be able to reward you. <laughs> the second task he gives you is an assassination. The Grand Matriarch Iha. The city is governed by a essentially a council of matriarchs, but one of them is the Grand Matriarch, without which the entire governance of the city would fall to chaos. What this would do would be to essentially embolt, first of all, uh, destroy any semblance of order amongst the city taskmasters. Everybody would be scrambling for power. Secondly, it would confuse the chain of command. They would be much less able to deploy any of this green goo. And third, it might embolden a slave uprising, which you probably know from experience can be very deadly in a Yanti city. Okay. In any event, it was Iha's uh, final decision to allow these Hydroloths to come in and meddle with their affairs. Mm -hmm. The third, he describes the place in the city where he lived, in the Malison's quarters, where he has a personal family heirloom called the Staff of Shinsa. He tells you that this item needs to be extracted because it is a magical staff, and he could not bear for it to fall into the hands of any of his enemies in the chaos should you succeed. Whether he lives or dies in the hand of these rat folk, he needs you to get this item out of the city. And so we pick this back up next week. We will pull up the map of the Yanti city. And I have all kinds of fun ways for you guys to do reconnaissance on it, so you can start planning your attack. What is this? Cool. Uh, what is White Snake's actual actual Will name? Tell me that. Yeah, so I can. So, so when I have to talk to Tatsoshi. Sure. It is Shasta. Really, fantasy name generator. You're gonna give me Shasta. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, is he orange Shasta? It's, it's not Shasta, shut up. <laughs>
A kill. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, coconut shasta. We'll go with A kill. I like Lemon it. lime shasta. Okay. <laughs> so can it just be driven. <laughs> Well, I didn't want to interrupt all that, but I would like to have spent some of the long rests that we had, like, uh, identifying the two items that we picked up, the, the, the potion and the scroll. Okay, we can do that here. I've got a bunch of poisons to identify as well. Also, Razu would like to attempt to learn the charm person spell. Okay, yeah, you guys can all make those rolls. You guys had the chance to take ten long rests. Adrix was out in the wilderness alone, so he gets the chance to take zero what? long rests. What uh, DC am I aiming for to identify these potions? Uh, oh, sorry, I closed that file already. Let me open that back up. I think it was 15, but let me double check. Crap. Yeah, it's 15. So, uh, I'm going to start with so many 20s today. This is going to get really uh, chaotic, so we'll start with red. Which one are you trying mm -hmm. to identify first? Uh, let's go with a red glass vial shaped. Okay. That fails. That succeeds. And you have a DMG handy, right? So I can just give you the name of these? Yeah. That is a dose of oil of taggits. T-A-G-G-I-T. Okay. Uh, next I've got a viscous fluid fluid in an ivory flat. Okay. So I use these three. They're all garbage. <laughs> 13. One of them was fine. Uh, that passed. That is one dose of carrion crawler mucus. That's good. Uh, metal in a foul flask. Okay. Or foul, foul smelling in a metal flask that passed. Uh, that is one dose of purple worm poison. Nice. Uh, a fasted smoked glass bottles. Looks like it says it's two. Yep, you have two of those. Uh, that passed. Each bottle contains one dose of... <laughs> Burnt other fumes. Okay. Uh, two pieces of sand, each in a silken pouch. Mm -hmm. Failed. Failed. And failed. Okay. So you still have. I like I need poison for the next adventure. So the two pinches of sand and the metal finger are still mysteries to you. Yep. All right, and who's trying to learn Charm Person? Uh, that's Razu. Uh, she had already sussed out the rune for it. Okay. In a previous adventure, and uh, so I was just I was just rolling them to myself, and I got no twenties. So. No twenties and ten I, rolls. The the spell, uh, yeah, no twenties and ten rolls with advantage. So there's no. Uh... Still not very charming. And then Birdie was going to identify two items. Yes, uh, potion R scroll H. I'm not going to use anything for extra things extra pluses to it okay. you, do have to, 20... you do have to drink a sip of the potion though right yes yes okay but that's a 24 and a uh 18 plus 11 29 okay so potion r the wispy mm -hmm. fog is a potion of etherealness as per the spell lets you traverse Ooh. the ethereal plane that would be helpful mm-hmm you step into the border regions of the ethereal, and you can do all kinds of fun stuff in there. And what did you get for the scroll? A 29. Scroll H is a scroll of fabricates. As per the spell. I don't know what that spell does, so I have to look that up. It converts raw materials into products of the same material. For example, you can fabricate a wooden bridge from a clump of trees, a rope from a patch of hemp, and so on. Neat. And are Win is Wendy doing anything with her long rests while we're here? Yeah, I'm going to make a couple potions of greater healing. Okay, you have the resources and rules to do that. That's the Xanathar's, right? Yeah, it's Xanathar's. Xanathar's just gives a time, though. I seem to remember you made up some rules involving rolling, but maybe I got that wrong. I think we were using the rules right out of the book. Then yeah, no, it's just time. Okay, so yeah, you can put ten days towards towards that uh -huh. time. All right. So I'm gonna have to go dark for a minute to add up some experience as I make a straw poll here. You guys can figure out where all our blips are going this week, and next week it'll be Metal Gear Flumph. Does anybody not have a potion of healing to pick someone up with if they need to? I think I used my last one. I mean, I've been. Uh, I have a. 
I have a superiority like just... potion I just picked up. We're actually we have one po we're one regular potion. All right, uh, I'm gonna make then a potion of greater healing, which I'll keep for myself, and I uh, actually three three potions of regular healing, which I will I, pass out. Okay. I think I'm gonna grab one of those. I think Wendy actually has like three potions on her regular potions. I'll pass out some of those too. I'm still keeping the greater healing for myself. That's fine. So who's the most creative today? Uh, Red for his plan to potentially, although apparently it didn't work, get rid of yep. the, uh, the goo. I agree with Adrian, that. Are you cool with me burning the gold that you're carrying for this? Yeah, that's fine. And uh, who is uh, who furthered the party's goals today? I'd say I'm going to vote Adrix for scouting out the place. I'm okay with that. Incredible yeah. personal Sorry. personal risk for that. Uh, who's a badass today? Red for opening the door and dodging a disintegrate that would have instantly killed his character. That, yeah, yeah, I'm down for that too. And who is intangible today? Got nothing on that one. Sorry. Yeah, I don't know. Who didn't get one? Um, I'm gonna vote Razu for putting up with this group of oh, what's this shiny thing? Just no, absolutely not. The Think of something better. <laughs> Razu is very put upon you guys. <laughs> you don't something have better. To. Dang it. You don't have to no, travel. Told Adrix's bag is broken. I was like, <laughs> so here's the thing. I'm going to, but I didn't get the right. chance because we, right. <laughs> mm, yeah. we fixed Must the bag. Have that happen. We fixed the bag. Um, so uh, Razu didn't get one. We didn't get one. So Razu, come up with a better reason to give you gold. What was really funny earlier? We <laughs> left the earlier. I can't remember what it was. Razu. I really need another level for this next. Raju really needs another level. That's the that's the yep, intangible. Because I am a level behind everybody. There it yeah, is. FYI. Because I'm still so level nine. I think so is red. Oh. Yeah, I'm, re is... I'm level nine. It's fine. Oh. I don't think level ten gives you anything good. Global thing gives me some good stuff. I'm actually pretty close to level ten already. All right. Like, yeah. I might make it if we got, a, I don't. Oh, do we even have any combats? We killed one guy. Yeah, we killed some guys. We killed a whole bunch of mephits. <laughs> They've been they riding really around your gold pouches for. Who wants to make a case for some blips today? Uh... I'll go. Wendy. All right, I've got our place in the world is to take apart what isn't working and make something that is mm -hmm. for Wendy's. Finally, perfect, 100% flawless plan to find the race's better, higher quality gods. <laughs> <laughs> I've got good is working for something other than yourself, for blowing up myself so that we could get rid of that horrible acid. Mm -hmm. I've got learning new things is never wasted, for using the legend lore uh, stone to learn everything we can about the golden angel. Okay. And I've got, wait, how does that work for my part in our horrible gold emptying endeavors? That was pretty good, yeah. Who else? Anybody? Uh, I've I'm got still thinking. Uh, alignment, neutral good. Mm -hmm. uh, survival requires the greatest good for the greatest number. Attempts to destroy that poison. I have the ideal of cold hard logic. Uh, for trying to convince the others that, you know, it's pretty much completely fine if we kill this guy. He's not <laughs> actually a good person. He's just a religious fanatic that happens to have uh, opinions that align with ours. And I've got uh, flaw. It's often best to just do what needs to be done. Explaining to the others would be a waste of time for working on those uh, underwater boxes. Okay. Who's next? Uh, I'll go. Uh, so... The accumulation of magical knowledge is something that makes me most useful to my tribe. Ultimate path to uh, pleasing my patrons so they won't get eaten. Uh, for collecting as much information from the uh, from the the the, room, the various rooms, like w totally not without the intention of 
like actually gathering information, just hoping that it would be useful in that way. That's why I got it. <laughs> okay. So I'm just carrying these books and stuff I can't read, hoping one day they'll become... Uh, focus on the little things. Like, Birdie totally walked away from all that gold. So focus on the little things, make the tribe stronger anyway I can. I walked away from all of that gold, <laughs> even though it is against my nature, because it's obviously evil cursed gold, and okay. I, that, I think that would make us stronger in the long run. And, uh... I had something for my alignment, but I don't remember. And then, uh, so we'll skip that. And then the video for the week before. Okay. Who's next? Adrix will go. Adrix, what'd you do? Uh, aspect, signature style, energetic. For grappling a gold me fit and trying to drown it. Now, was that actually combat or was that just straight up murder? That's combat, isn't it? Isn't it both? Is there a difference? <laughs> Is it both? <laughs> Snake can talk? love Bloom on a battlefield? Like, <laughs> Well, let me ask you this. If Bad Ears had murdered you in your sleep, would you have felt that you had died in combat? Yeah. I mean, Adrix would probably say yes. <laughs> well, Adrix wouldn't say combat. anything because he would be very dead. Okay, anything uh, else? Uh, flaws, that sounds like a great idea. Adrix convinced himself that he needed to go be a ranger and scout out the <laughs> scout out the uh, the uh, stronghold. <laughs> I do feel the need to remind viewers that Adrix is not a ranger. He has no levels in ranger. <laughs> well, I feel the need to remind you that the ranger class is bullshit. <laughs> uh, no. I don't know if you want to give it for... Uh, Adrix convinces himself is a good idea. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like a great idea, uh, great idea so. <laughs> and uh, alignment beliefs, it is very important to be good at all times and resist evil because evil sucks. The moment he realized that Bad Ears was betraying him, he made no attempt to try and rationalize and reason with him. He just needed to die. You stabbed him and pretty good, is, too. That is what took Adrix over. Okay. And... What's Razu have for me? And adrix.livejournal.com. Adrix.livejournal.com. Okay. What does Razu have for me? I have uh, my aspect when my anger is roused. I have trouble thinking straight and I fear I might do something I'll regret. For having the for having the frustration at Wendy's weight, how does that work bleeding over into the player? <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> Wendy was very, ooh, how does that work? How does that work? How does that work? How does that work? Ah, and I'm like, oh my god, I had to beat myself several times from screaming. So you want to kill Nodal? A little bit. Bricker told us to read the racial description. That's right in there. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, I get it. It's, it's really bugging Razu. So Nodal is like, literally turning into an Aarakocra, and McDole is literally turning into a Hobgoblin. <laughs> I think I got the better end of that stick. <laughs> yeah. Uh, good and evil are subjective distinctions. What matters is keeping to your own ethics for attempting to bear the hatchet with the orc and getting spit at. <laughs> I did enjoy antagonizing you with my orc. I bet you did. Uh, a sword arm is only the beginning of a greater role, but it's a necessary first step for continuing to fight at the front against the uh, against the Yugoloth, uh, despite how being injured she was. Mm-hmm. And Razu's flaw, I take any advantage that can to in my allies regardless of the consequences for ta taking the time to loot the lab despite the fact that it's very possible that someone that they could have come back in force and done horrible things to us. We have one blip for the most creative solution to a problem this session. Uh, Red for his attempt at destroying the goo bag poison, which didn't destroy the goo bag poison. It transmogrified it into a different form of goo bag poison. That seems Wait, bad. Do, do we, like, okay, so does that mean that Wendy's going to turn into a goo bag now? You don't know what it means. Hmm. Well, you one blip for who furthered the party's goals the most this session? Uh, that was uh, Adrex for heading out at great personal risk to uh, reconnaissance the place. Who was the badass this week? That was red for no selling a disintegration beam. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
I'm not gonna lie. I would have killed I, him if he hadn't. I wanted to hit someone with that disintegration wand, but I kind of <laughs> didn't want it to be red. Because <laughs> like, you knew he would avoid it. He he didn't deserve it for one thing. <laughs> I feel like anybody else would have deserved that. <laughs> we have one blip for the intangibles. We give that to Razu because she needs a level. Okay. <laughs> And let me check my straw poll here. Even though she's being very mean to Wendy. A tie between <laughs> Adrix and Birdie in the straw poll, so we need a, a, a tiebreaker in the straw poll. My vote's on Adrix. Here's your I encounter experience. I'm giving everybody one blip for attempting to dispatch the poison. You guys spent a lot of time thinking about what's the best way to do this. And uh, ultimately, we made everything worse, so... Yeah, I don't know, there's a bunch of hell poison there, but just no one goes to that room anymore. Yeah, everybody's yeah no one goes there, it's fine. Everybody <laughs> gets 1,050 experience for killing a Hydroloff and a pack of Mephits. That's your 1,050? 1,050. Adrix, in addition, gets 2,400 for killing the Assassin. Holy crap! <laughs> nice. That, that's, a, you, dude. that's a high level creature that Adrix fought one on one. 66 sneak attack that he got twice in a row. <laughs> yeah, no, that, no, that was, yeah, I was really worried. Concerned. That I was, was really an encounter worried. that I was planning to have you guys fight bad ears on the way to the Yanti city, but he's like, I'm going on an expedition. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I told him he was going to level, and I was right. I'm, I'm not going to lie, Brick. Like. <laughs> I, to use to use your term, I was bloodied, and I was really concerned. <laughs> I was like, "This is my view. Andrix ends." Mm -hmm. I mean, oh, Andrix is the kind of it's my thing. fault this time. In retrospect, I should have given him the class feature that gives him the auto crit if he has surprise and beats you in initiative. Oh, assassin! Yeah, assassinate! I, I didn't do that. See, though. that would have been terrible to kill him with his own class feature from the previous campaign. <laughs> No, it wouldn't have. That would no, be fantastic. I, I, I don't think he had that ability. I don't remember him ever going first. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder <laughs> why, Nodal. It, were, it wasn't, no, it wasn't Nodal as much as it was Nick. <laughs> and, and, and to a lesser yeah. extent, Destal. It was a lot of me pleading, no, please, let's let's get the jump on these guys, and before I can even finish... Hey, you, you can't make that argument for Nath. Serenity, I'll give you, but that's why I said. So, that's why I said to a lesser extent, Destable. So, Adrix also takes our straw poll for this week. I imagine for the expedition as well. So, Razu, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six blips for you. Blips are worth. How much are blips? Okay. Seven hundred, I believe. Right? Everybody's like highest level is ten. Uh no, I'm eleven. Okay, so blips are worth five hundred. What? Uh, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not ten to eleven to the end of the session. Nope, though. they're worth five hundred. Windy, God I got five it, blips no. for you. I didn't do it. <laughs> Adrix takes five blips this week. Birdie oh, takes wow, four blips wow. this week, and Red takes six blips this week. <sighs> okay, level ten. Adrix, do you have wings yet? <laughs> Uh, I'm level 11 now, I oh, think. Is that not the level you get wings? It's 12, level 12. 12, 12, I get a feat. <laughs> Feet's going to your feet. All right. I knew you were going to say that, and there's just nothing I could do about it. I, like, I you saw you repeated coming. yourself again louder to try to drown him out. <laughs> <laughs> and it didn't work. All right. So, at the beginning of the campaign... I asked everybody to give me an adventure idea that you'd like to play through, and one of my players said Metal Gear Solid, so that's what we're doing next week. What? So I said that. that we have, I, I so think it was me. Sokolov, we have the, uh... <laughs> we have the, uh, the... Uh, oh, God, what is it? Volgan. We have Sokolov and Volgan, and... <laughs> oh, my God. We need to find something dumb, because I need another Kensei weapon. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I got oh, you. Get at eleven. Right, what so is an Iklua? Excuse me. <laughs> you should use a so it's right here. Iklua. That's gonna do it for us this week. We'll see everybody back next Sunday for more of this nonsense. Thanks, guys, for playing and watching and everything. I get another attack. <laughs> <laughs>